Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Nashville Hot Chicken. That's right, when I first heard about this stuff, I thought it was some kind of internet hoax. I was supposed to believe that they take crispy southern fried chicken, and then before serving it, they drench it with cayenne-infused lard? I mean, that sounds totally made up, and possibly illegal. Well, as it turns out, it's not made up, and completely legal, and one of the most amazing fried chicken dishes you will ever taste. So I am very excited to show you my version, and that's going to begin with what's basically a marinade. So we're going to go ahead and add some buttermilk to a mixing bowl. And by the way, for the record, in the original recipe, this is just regular whole milk. But I do prefer the buttermilk. And then as you may have noticed from the intro picture, this is always served with pickles, which of course come in a brine, and I'm going to add some of that brine right into this mixture, followed by a very generous amount of hot sauce. And that one people like to use on wings is very popular for this, but I don't like that brand. Shh, don't tell them. They might be a sponsor. So I'm going to toss in a less popular, but what I think is a more delicious Louisiana hot sauce. And then last but not least, we will crack in one large egg. And then we'll take a whisk and mix that thoroughly. And as soon as all that's been completely combined, our marinade is done and ready for our chicken, which, as you can see here, has been cut into the traditional eight pieces. Of course, we have your two legs, your two thighs, a couple breasts, and a pair of wings. And I know I've showed you guys how to cut up a chicken before, so I'll try to remember to add a link to the blog post. But anyway, we're going to need one cut up chicken, which ideally you've tossed with some salt the night before and left it in the fridge. But I'm going to be honest, I didn't do that. Since this was kind of a last minute decision to film, and as you'll see, this is still going to work out beautifully, but if you can plan it out, seasoning the night before is better. And that is another issue I will explain in detail on the blog. But either way, what we'll do is go ahead and pour that marinade over our chicken, and then take our tongs and make sure all that's mixed around very well. Okay, chicken pieces are famous for their nooks and crannies. So I'm editing this, but take a minute or two and make sure all those pieces are thoroughly, thoroughly coated. And then once that's been accomplished, what we'll do is wrap this and transfer this into the fridge for two to four hours. Now, can you do it less time? Yes. Can you do it more time? Sure. But I only guarantee the same results if you do it two to four hours. So we will pop that in the fridge, and while we're waiting, we can go ahead and do our seasoned flour, which is super easy, because all we're gonna do is take some all-purpose flour and add in some fine salt. And sure, if you want, you could use kosher, but I much prefer the taste of the fine. Yes, that was a joke, at least to some people. But anyway, we're gonna add some salt to the flour, and we'll give that a stir. And in case you're wondering why we're not adding a bunch of other spices into this, that's because we're going to be finishing this by brushing on that highly seasoned spicy sauce. So we're just going flour salt here. And then once that's prepped, and assuming our chicken is marinated long enough, we can go ahead and pull that out and start the dredging. Double dredging to be more exact. So how I like to do this is to pull that chicken out of the marinade and sort of wipe off any excess and let it drip back into the bowl before placing that on some paper towels. Because what I want to do here is sort of blot off that excess liquid. And I'm doing that for two reasons. Since this is going to be double dredged, meaning it's going to go in the flour twice, I like to do that first application of flour without the chicken being too wet. So we'll pull that chicken out of the marinade and sort of blot it off a little bit with the paper towels. And then the other reason, because we didn't do the overnight seasoning with the salt, I'm going to give these pieces a little extra seasoning with salt right here. And at that point, we can start the double dredging process. So we will take our chicken pieces along with our reserve marinade. Oh, don't throw that away. We're going to need that. And we can start this double dredging as shown. So we'll take a piece of chicken and toss it in our flour. And we'll roll that around until it's completely coated and there are no wet spots to be seen. And we'll go ahead and shake off the excess and pop that right back into our marinade. And we'll kind of toss that around until it's coated and then let most of the excess drip off before returning it back to the flour for the second dredging. And once that's been thoroughly and thoughtfully coated a second time, we will transfer that to a rack and that's it. Okay, so to summarize, first we make it wet, then we make it dry, then we make it wet, then we make it dry. And that really is the key to Nashville hot chicken perfection. And speaking of keys, we want to make sure we're using the old wet hand, dry hand method. Okay, you see how I'm using my left hand just for the flour and my right hand just for the milk mixture? That is definitely the recommended technique. Otherwise, it's just super messy to work with. I mean, as it is, it's already super messy. But we don't want to make that worse by having our fingers all gunked up. So using that old wet hand, dry hand, will continue on until all our chicken has been double dredged. And then what we're going to do next, which is a very underrated step, is we're just going to let this sit out on the countertop for 15 minutes to sort of dry out a little bit. All right, that's going to give this time for that coating to kind of set up. And I really think you do get better results. And it really does help if you use a rack like I'm using here so we get some air circulation underneath. But if you don't have a rack for whatever reason, you could just crinkle up some foil. That works too. 
And then what we want to do during that 15 minutes is go ahead and make our sauce. So into this pan, I'm going to toss some butter and some lard. I don't believe I've ever said that before. And then to that, we're going to add a little touch of cayenne. Actually, we're going to add a whole spoon. You know what? Make it two spoons. And by the way, if you think that's an insane amount of cayenne, the actual original recipe is about three or four times that much. So I'm going to do this only with two tablespoons of cayenne. And then we'll also do a little bit of garlic powder, as well as some sweet paprika. And speaking of sweet, we want to do a little bit of brown sugar and a touch of salt, as well as some freshly ground black pepper. And once we have all that together, what we'll do is place this over medium high heat. And all we need to do is cook this for a couple minutes stirring until those fats melt and everything gets heated through. And sure, this might look a little scary, but don't be afraid. The food gods hate a coward, so have faith. And if everything goes according to plan, it should look something like this. And once that's set, we'll turn off the heat and just keep that on the back of the stove warm until we need it. And assuming that our chicken has now sat out for 15 minutes, we can go ahead and start frying. And today we're going to be doing that in a cast iron skillet, which will fill about a third of the way up with vegetable oil, and heat to 350. And once our oils reach temperature, we will carefully place in our chicken, skin side down, at least for the breast and thighs. Legs and wings don't matter. And of course, once we add that in, the temperature of the oil is going to drop. But then it's going to come back up. And what we're going to try to do is maintain a temperature of 325. Which could mean you're just going to stay on medium high heat. But maybe not. So that's going to be you cooking. Adjusting that temperature, tweaking it a little bit up, a little bit down. And as far as the cooking time goes here, it's going to be about 8 to 10 minutes per side. But I guarantee nothing. And you really should check with a the thermometer. And go to at least 160 internal temp. And if you want, feel free to turn this just once, but that's not how I do it. What I like to do is let the first side go for about six or seven minutes. Then I will go ahead and turn those over. And I'll give that second side about six or seven minutes. And then I'll turn it back over for another minute or two. And then if it needs more time, I might even turn it again. And what I think happens with these additional turns is because some of that coating is above the surface, it cools down a little. When we turn that back over, we get kind of a twice fried effect which is gonna result in an unbelievably crispy, crunchy chicken. So that's how I do it, and I have great results with that. And if you're afraid it's gonna absorb more oil that way, don't be. It really doesn't, and even so, did I mention we're gonna brush this with lard? So I'm not sure that's really gonna be a problem. And of course, if you fried chicken before, you know all the pieces aren't gonna finish at the same time. So I pulled my wings out first because they finished first, and then I continued on until everything was cooked perfectly. And again, to be safe, you'll wanna check with a thermometer, we're shooting for at least an internal temp of 160. So once we've determined our chicken is cooked long enough, we will remove that to a rack to drain. And by the way, in case you were wondering, no, I was not trying to be artistic with this shot, where you blur the foreground and then focus on the background. That's really more so me not knowing what I'm doing. So at this point, let me go ahead and distract you by grabbing a fork and letting you hear just how crispy this stuff comes out. But as good as that sounds, it tastes even better. So let's go ahead and plate up. And there's really only one acceptable way to do this, and that's on top of sliced white bread, okay? The cheaper, the better. Okay, we want something that contains no fiber and even less nutrients. So we'll place down our hot fried chicken on what technically qualifies as bread. And then we will finish this up by generously brushing over our spicy sauce, preferably to both sides. And by the way, down in Nashville, they literally dunk the pieces of chicken in like vats of this stuff. So I'm sure there's a few people down from those parts that are laughing at me with my dainty brush. So if you'd rather toss these pieces with the sauce or dip them in, that's up to you. You are the T-bone pickings of how to sauce your Nashville hot chickens. But anyway, we're gonna generously apply our spiced butter lard mixture. And then right here, if I was a famous food photographer, I could have left those drips, but I'm not, so I cleaned them up. And then for a final touch, we'll finish this off with some slices of bread and butter pickles. We definitely want something on the sweet side here so we can balance the heat from the cayenne and that is it, our Nashville hot chicken is done. And looking absolutely stunning. So let me go ahead and grab this napkin and silverware and not use them. And I'll go ahead and grab a leg and bite into what is probably the best fried chicken ever. Just insanely crispy. That meat is moist and flavorful thanks to that spicy buttermilk marinade. And then permeating everything, we have that cayenne and spice infused butter and lard. That is just an absolutely incredible bite of food. And because I was in a hurry and only brushed sauce on one side of the chicken, I'm gonna stop and brush on a little more. And I believe in the business this is called relarding. But anyway, that's it, my take on Nashville hot chicken. 
Normally I would have filmed me eating the rest of that piece and probably one or two more pieces, but this video is already way too long. So I'm gonna stop right here and finish off by saying I really, really, really hope you give this a try soon. So head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.